Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you all the books that I got over the month of December. So these are a collection of books that were either birthday gifts, Christmas holiday gifts, or just kind of ones I bought myself. I did take advantage of a lot of a lot of these sales that a lot of the bookshops were doing over the holiday season. So the majority of these ones are ones that I purchased myself. Um, but I have a lot of like exciting books to look forward to in 2022. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So these next two were ones that my boyfriend gave me. The first one was for my birthday, and I've already read this one actually, and I really liked it. And it is Among, Among Others by Joe Walton. This is the winner of the Hugo and Nebula Awards. And this follows a, a girl named Maury who was a twin, but due to a horrific accident involving her kind of dark witch mother, her sister was killed. And so she is kind of um, kind of sent to her estranged father where they kind of ship her off to a posh boarding school but Maury has the ability to do kind of like magic she can talk to fairies and all these other things so it's very much a coming of age story 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 with very subtle fantasy elements into it it was a very like I'll go more into this book about in my like wrap up but I really liked it I think it's very subtle it is basically a love letter to the kind of 1970 uh, science fiction and fantasy. This uh, Mori as a character very much loves that genre so basically you get a lot of good book recommendations out of this but this one I think if you like kind of subtle fantasy kind of mixed in with coming of age stories then I think this would be the perfect gift or book for you to read. Like I said I really enjoyed it as well. Um, I felt like this was really like a good time to read it when it's because we didn't get any snow this year for Christmas so it's just been dark and soggy and wet outside so I felt like this one was the perfect book to read. And then my boyfriend also got me this one for Christmas and it is Titus Grown by Mervyn Peak. and this is the first book in the Gormangas trilogy and it took me a while because I was like I remember like I've heard this name before but I don't know where um, but I've heard Sunbeam just talk about this kind of uh, trilogy um, so I think he said this is one of his favorite kind of fantasy ones um, it says represent one of the most brilliantly sustained flights of gothic imagination Titus grown the first book in this timeless series um, it um, opens with Titus has just been born as heir to Lord so-and-so he stands to inherit the miles of rambling stone and mortar that form castle gormangoss inside the gorm inside of gormangoss all events are predetermined by complex rituals the origins of which which are lost in time um so this one sounds like it would be very interesting and i feel like this one would be a good one to read kind of when it's kind of fall like not fall but like maybe kind of end of winter fall time just given the atmosphere of this but like I said I've heard really great things about this so I think this would be a fun book you know to pick up sometime in the new year so next moving on these next three books were ones that I purchased um, when I went to half price books I had some books that I wanted to unhaul so I used that money towards these books um, the first one being Piranesi by Susanna Clark I've heard tremendous things about this one it just I've been intrigued for a while and I finally um, ended up picking a copy for myself um, but I think for this one, I've been told the less you know about it, the better. So it follows this um, narrator who is kind of within the, like lives within this world where it's like endless walls lined with thousands upon thousands statues within the labyrinth of halls of halls and ocean is imprisoned, waves thunder up the staircase, so and so. But Piranesi, the main character, is not afraid. He understands the tide. Um, and kind of like what goes on in this house but I don't think I'm doing a really good job at explaining this um but I just think like I've been told like the less you know the better so um but it's basically with this fa fantasy world within this kind of labyrinth of infinite uh, rooms within this world is what the main character um kind of goes through but like I said I've heard really great things about this and I kind of just want to dive in not really knowing much else besides kind of the rooms within rooms within rooms of this world. 
So I just happened to stumble upon this book because I did read The Good Sister back in November by this author and I really liked it so I wanted to pick up more of her books in the future and so I ended up picking up The Mother-in-Law by Sally Hepworth. Again this is another book by an author that I really loved. So it says from the moment Lucy met her husband mother she knew she wasn't the wife Diana had envisioned for her perfect son. <laughs> Exquisitely polite, friendly, and also generous, Diana nevertheless kept Lucy at arm's length despite her desperate attempts attempts to win her over. And because she was a pillar in the community, an advocate for female refugees, and a woman happily married for decades, no one had a bad word to say about Diana except Lucy. That was five years ago. Now Diana is dead, a suicide note found in her body claiming that she no longer wanted to live because of the cancer wrecking havoc inside of her, but the autopsy finds no cancer. It does find traces of poison and evidence of suffocation. So I think this one sounds so interesting. I love kind of the mystery aspect. So I would assume you would kind of get parallel storylines between the past um, and kind of the present day um, post-suicide. So this one just sounds super interesting. If it's anything like the good sister I'm pretty sure that I will really like it and lastly this is the final book that I picked up from that half price books um, haul and this is another one that has been on my eye like I've had my eye on for a while and it is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel um, this is another one I said I've heard Sunbeams just talk about a lot um, but it is a historical fiction um, so it says England in the 19 in the 1520s is a heartbeat from disaster if the king dies without a male heir the country would be destroyed by civil war henry the eighth wants to wants to annul his uh, marriage to of 20 years and marry anne boleyn uh, the pope in most of europe opposes him in this impassive steps thomas cromwell a wholly ordinary original man a charmer and a bully both idealist and opportunist um, astute to reading people and impeccable in his ambition but henry is volatile one day tender one day murderous cromwell helps him break the opposition but what will be the price of his triumph so i think this is also a trilogy too and like i said i've heard really great things about this um it is also winner of the man booker prize so we'll see how this one goes i always love kind of historical fiction and i think this one um just sounds really like a lot of fun and i haven't really read anything from this era so i think it will be quite the adventure so next this is a book that my parents got me for my birthday and it is state of terror by hillary clinton and louise penny i'm super excited to pick this one up i think because i was talking about this for so long they i think they like knew i love louise penny and so i was talking about her book with hillary clinton just you know in passing um so they ended up picking this up for me but this is kind of like a political thriller slash mystery um so it says after a tumultuous period in American politics, a new administration had just been sworn in, and to everyone's surprise, the President of the United States chose a political enemy for the vital position of Secretary of State. There is no love lost between the President and Ellen Adams, his new Secretary of State, but it's a canny move on the part of the President. With this appointment, he has control over one of his harshest critics. Within weeks of Adams' appointments, terrorists strike a series of horrific blows as the State Department is in disarray and um, is, is in disarray. The new Secretary of State must scramble to figure out what has happened and what will happen next. Adding to the cri uh, crisis, the previous administration left the country without many friends or allies. America finds itself out of touch with international affairs, out of practice with diplomacy, and out of power in the places where and when it counts most. So I think this one sounds super interesting. You can kind of see how the past kind of political era um, has inspired this and especially Hillary Clinton being a previous Secretary of State. I think that'll be really interesting to see how that's very much integrated in here. But like I said, I love Louise Penny. So I've heard really great things like this book has pretty good reviews. So I'm excited. I love anything. I'll read anything Louise Penny puts out. So I'm super excited to pick this one up. Like I said, like I am just wanting for a new Inspector Gamache book to come out probably in the late like early fall next year but so this will have to tide me over until then so next up this is a book that my brother got me for my birthday and if you guys don't know we are big fans of the office like we watch we rewatch the series every single year um and we've started up again so this is one of the new kind of office books that has been coming out because i know um jenna fisher and 
person who plays like Angela, I don't remember her last name, are going to be um, having a book that comes out in the new year as well. So there's just a lot of office stuff coming out. This one is Welcome to Dunder Mifflin, The Ultimate History of the Office um, by Brian Baumaner and Ben Silver, which I think was a writer, producer, and then the guy who plays Kevin on there as well. Um, but this one is one of the ones that is signed, so that is pretty cool too. So I don't have very many signed books, but that was pretty cool. But I think it just kind of recounts um, all the different seasons, how the show started out. There's like interviews with different uh, people that were a part of the show, different actors, all these different things. So I think this one will be a fun book to kind of read throughout our rewatch because I think like it says here's like season one, which I hate season one, but it kind of goes off from there. But it'll be fun to kind of read along as we are kind of working on our rewatch. So yeah, I'm excited for this one. And kind of the last one as a gift, this was one that my friend got me for Christmas. And during the pandemic, we would have a book club that we've done together. And so we've read a lot of, we have a lot of the same reading days. So she read this one and loved it. Um, so she got one for me as well. And it was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And it says, um, two best friends, 10 summer trips, one last chance to fall in love. So Poppy and Alex, they have nothing in common. She's a wild child, he, wear ca he wears khakis. She has insatiable wonderlust. He prefers to stay at home with a book. And somehow, ever since a fateful car share home from college many years ago, they are the very best of friends. For most of the year, they live far apart. She's in New York and he's in a small hometown. But every summer for a decade, they have taken one glorious week of vacation together. Until two years ago when they ruined everything, they haven't spoken since. So I think this one just sounds a lot of fun. <laughs> like I just kind of want to, I feel like this one would be a good one to read around um, uh, Valentine's Day. So I think this will be like kind of my romance book to read. But like I said, she said she loved it. So um, I have high expectations going into it. I've kind of surprised myself with some of the romance that I've read kind of within this last year, last for our book club that we read. We read One Day in December, which I really liked. I read like the Brown Sisters trilogy by Talia Hibbert. Like I love all those things. So I have high hopes for this one. So this is a box set that I picked up when Barnes and Nobles was having a kind of big sale on their website. And this is a series that my other friend and I will be reading for our book club that we've had I want to say since like October 2018 so we've been doing this a long time now we're doing the Grisha trilogy and then Six of Crows and I think after we finish that we're going to move on to this one and it is the truly <laughs> truly devious uh, trilogy by Maureen Johnson the first being truly devious the vanishing star and then the hand on the wall I think this one sounds like a lot of fun I think it's like a murder mystery series that takes place in this boarding school in Vermont and that is all I want to know about it my friend has read this uh, previously but I don't think she ended up finishing the trilogy so um, I think this will be a lot of fun to kind of read together so I don't want to know too much about this I just kind of want to go into it and just kind of experience it with my friend so this is a book that has been on my radar again for a while and my again it was one that I've heard a tremendous amount of things for and I think there is an Amazon Prime or like one of those like Hulu or one of those streaming uh, platforms is picking this up for a TV show so I figured I would want to read it before that comes out I think in 2022 um, and it is Daisy Joan and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I've never read anything by this author but again one of my friends has read a few of her books and she said this one is a lot of fun but basically from what I gather it is about this band called Daisy Jones and the Six that were very popular in the 60s but they ended up breaking up um, and it is basically a recount of those events in the band so it's actually a lot of it is told in interview kind of style which I think will be interesting I'm sure you guys probably already know a lot about this but it just seems like a lot of fun and like I said I wanted to read this before um, the TV series comes out so whenever that is announced <laughs> I have this ready to go but I, I think this one would, again would be like a good one to read kind of around the summertime like I said I've heard really great things about this so this was a birthday gift for myself. Um, I had a subscriber um, send me the first version of this or like the first book in the series for this one. So this is one that I kind of wanted to add to my collection and just kind of 
you know, as they are being released. So I ended up picking up the Lima, what are they, these called? The Mina, Mina Lima um, editions of Harry Potter, and this is being the Chamber of Secrets, but these books are kind of like very interactive. They have beautiful drawings in them. I haven't taken it out of its wrapping yet, but I do have the first book. It's in my bookshelf upstairs, so I keep, I'm going to keep these two together, but I think these are just nice kind of additions to kind of collect. I have like the house editions up here. I have like the original editions, the... Bloomsbury kind of new covers like I just collect different versions of <laughs> Harry Potter but yeah these ones are really fun and the illustrations in here are just stunning. So next these are two books from the same author. The first one is The Winemaker's Wife and the next one is The Forest of Vanishing Stars. So these are both kind of historical fiction um, World War II kind of era. So for The Winemaker's Wife it says Champagne 1940 at the dawn of the Second World War. Inez is the younger wife of Michael, owner of the Maison Chavot, a champagne house near Reims, France. And it could be, it should have been an idyllic life, but Inez, who often, who's often treated like a child by her husband, his head winemaker Theo, and Theo's wife Celine, is increasingly happy, and then the Germans arrive. Celine feels as lost as Inez does, but they don't have much else in common, and when Rast's decisions destroy the fragile connection between them, their lives and the lives of those they love are imperiled, along with the champagne house they've worked so hard to save. And then New York 2019, recently divorced, lived, is at rock bottom with her French grandmother shows up unannounced, insisting they leave for on a flight to Paris. But the older woman has an ulterior motive and a decades-old story to share. When past and present intertwine at last, Liv may finally find a way forward along a diff difficult road that leads straight to the caves of Maison Chabot. So that one sounds really interesting. And then for the Forest of Vanishing Stars, this one is the one I'm really excited about. Ooh, what is, oh, I have my parking pass from when I went to the art museum, but it says, um, after being stolen from her wealthy German parents, um, and raised in the unforgiving wilderness of Eastern Europe, Yona has amassed a lifetime of survivor skills. She knows how to find food in the depths of the harshest winter, how to build a shelter to withstand elements, and even how to kill a man if she must, but little about the simplest humor act, human interactions. Her solitary existence is interrupted in the early days of World War II, however, when she happens upon a group of Jews fleeing Nazi per persecution. Stunned to learn what's happening in the outside world, she vows to teach the group all she can can about surviving in the forest and in turn they teach her some surprising lessons about opening up her heart after years of isolation. I think this one just sounds so interesting and just the concept is like I'm super excited for this one so this is definitely one that I will be picking up relatively soon because again like I said I am honestly I think this this concept sounds so interesting. So these next three books were pre-orders that I made for kind of continuation of series that all came out in the month of December. The first one is Darkness Falls. Oh, let's drop my book there by Robert Brinsda. This is the third book in the Kate Marshall, ser Marshall series, um, but it follows a girl named Kate Marshall who 15 years prior was a police officer in what should have been the most defining moment in her life where she kind of discovered who the Nine Elm, Nine Elm serial killer was, ended up being kind of one of the worst moments of her life. She ended up having an affair with this man prior to knowing that he was indeed the murderer and so the media tore her life apart and still 15 years after those events she's still p picking the pieces of her life back together. She is now a criminology professor at a university but after a string of murders that take place that are eerily similar to the events that happened 15 years ago she kind of gets pulled in to these investigations and it goes off from there. This is the third book in this series so with these ones continuing series I don't want to know too much about it I just kind of like going into it um, blind but yeah I'm excited to see what Kate Marshall has in store next so this is a book three in the Eve Ronan series and it is Gated Prey by Lee, Ger Lee Goldberg as I said don't want to know what the plot of this one is but Eve like the premise of this series is that it follows Eve Ronan who you his the youngest female homicide detective in LAPD history um, but how that all came about is that she um, ended up becoming viral as a police officer for arresting the celebrity who was being um, kind of involved in 
some domestic violence and so she used that as leverage to get a position into the homicide department and so she feels the need to kind of prove herself and kind of it goes off from there but these like these books actually took me by surprise I wasn't expecting to love them as much as I did they're incredibly fast-paced and you're just on your toes the entire time so this is a book that you could easily read in one day like that's how good the writing is and just how fast it is to read um, so yeah I'm excited to see what this one has in store again I don't want to know anything about the plot in here um, but yeah if you're looking for a new newer crime series to start I would recommend this one because like I said there's only been this is the third book and it just came out recently so um, yeah they're definitely a lot of fun they're a little bit different they're modern I just think they're really well done and lastly this is one that I thought was a continuation of one series but it actually isn't um, and it is At First Light by Barbara Nicholas. I thought this was the new newest book in the Sydney Parnell series by this author but this is a entire new series so um, it says on the muddy banks of the Calmont River a body has been found posted next to a series of mysterious glyphs and bearing wounds from a ritualistic slaying. Chicago detective Chicago detective Addie Bissett knows only one man who can decipher the messages left by the killer, her friend Dr. Evan Wilding. A brilliant uh, forensic simotician, um, Evan decodes the etchings as Viking age runes. Um, they, su they suggest either human sacrifice or righteous punishment to but to what god and for what sins um but i think this one sounds really interesting i really love this author and so i'm really interested to see kind of what her new series will entail and all that fun stuff i think it will just be a lot of fun to read and so like i said i have high expectations for this one this is kind of another murder mystery um series that i know is really well loved i think the second book came out sometime this year so um it is something i get to look forward to and it is the thursday murder club by richmond osman um this one i just think sounds like the premise of this is so interesting um but it says in a peaceful retirement village Four unlikely friends meet weekly in the jigsaw room to discuss unsolved crimes. Together they call themselves the Thursday Murder Club. When a local developer is found dead with a mysterious photograph le left next to the body, the friends suddenly find themselves in the middle of their first live case. They might be senior citizens, but they are cleverer than most. As the bodies begin to pile up, can our unorthodox but brilliant gang catch the killer before it's too late? I think this is just an interesting premise. I like the idea of it taking place in the a retirement village I think will make it a lot of fun and like I said I've heard really great things about this or this book so fingers crossed I like it so we are finally at the last five books I feel like I've just been talking for ages now um, this is again another historical fiction novel I feel like I want to get into more historical fiction this year I feel like I've kind of fallen out of that I used to be obsessed with historical, fi historical fiction now I kind of read it kind of sporadically but I kind of want to get into this a little bit more and this is Bluebird by Sharon Cameron. This is a YA um, novel but it still sounds very interesting. So in 1946 Eve, Eva leaves behind the rubble of Berlin for the streets of New York City stepping from the fiery aftermath of one ward into another far colder a far colder one where power is more important than principles and lies more plentiful than the truth. Eva holds the key to a deadly secret. Project Bluebird, a horrific experiment of the concentration camps capable of tipping the balance of world power. Both the Americans and the Soviets want Bluebird and is something that neither should ever be allowed to possess. Um, but I think this one sounds really interesting. Like I said, I haven't read, I don't tend to read a lot of YA, but I think the premise of this one sounded just super interesting. So, um, and the reviews of this are pretty decent as well. So fingers crossed this is one that I end up enjoying. So I was a big fan of the Stanley Tucci Searching for Italy series on CNN and so he had had a memoir come out recently that I was really excited to read and it is Taste by Stanley Tucci, My Life Through Food, but I think it talks about him growing up in an Italian American family and just how food has very much kind of centered around his life and um, everything kind of in and out of the kitchen which I think sounds really interesting like I said I just know I just picked this up on a whim just to see but yeah this one sounds like it will be a lot of fun 
again, this is another historical fiction that I was just really intrigued by, and I just love the cover too. It is Still Life by Sarah Windman, and it says here, Tuscany, 1944, as Allied troops advance and bombs fall around the deserted villages, a young English soldier, Ulysses Temper, finds himself in the wine cellar of an abandoned villa. There he has a chance encounter with Evelyn Skinner, a middle-aged art historian who has come to Italy to salvage painting from the ruin and recall long forgotten memories of her own youth. In each other, Ulysses and Evelyn find a kindred spirit amidst the rubble of war and torn Italy and set off a course of events that will shape Ulysses' life for the next four decades. And it kind of goes off from there. I think this one sounds interesting. I like how it be kind of a book that kind of follows these characters after their chance encounter for several years after the fact. So yeah, like I said, this one was really intriguing and it was definitely the cover that uh, piqued my interest of this one. So I want to say like maybe six years ago, I was really obsessed with Lane Moriarty. I loved kind of the husband secrets, like Big Little Lies, What Alice Forgot, and I haven't read any of her newer books and so this is one of her newest releases which is Apple's Neville Never Fall but I think this is again kind of like a murder mystery type thing so it says um if your mother was missing would you tell the police even if the most obvious suspect was your father I think that tagline just found it like super interesting and so I'm very curious to see I just like that's all I want to know about this book I just that tag really uh, got to me so we'll see I haven't like I said I haven't read Elaine Moriarty book in a while but I really think she does a good job with showing different dynamics of these characters and how just like the dynamics and the eventual lead up to a murder I think is going to be interesting especially kind of the cover up it seems like from these things just sounds super fun and a lot of it um, will be like an interesting read so yeah high hopes for this one. Alrighty so this is the final book and this is again one that I've had my eye on for a while and is The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This one again sounds super interesting and it says hidden in the depths of 18th century London a secret apothecary shop caters to unusual kind of clientele. When women across the city whisper of a mysterious figure named Nella who sells well-disguised poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives. Nella's dark world is no place for her newest patron, a precarious 12-year-old girl named Eliza Fanning, but their unexpected bond sparks a string of consequences that echoes through the centuries. 200 years later, aspiring historian Caroline discovers an aged apothecary vial in the River Thames as she is newly grappling with the searing betrayal of her husband's infidelity. A curious research project is exactly the distraction Caroline needs, but when she discovers a link between the vial and London's long unsolved apothecary murders, Caroline's upended present um, soon collides with an explosive history, binding her fate to Nella and Eliza in a stunning twist that transcends the barrier of time. Again, this one sounds super interesting and it's also fairly short too, it's just over 300 pages. So I think this one would be a lot of fun to read and I love kind of the magical historical aspect in here as well um, and the connection between the two storylines sounds like it will be a lot of fun so yeah this one just sounds like it will be a lot of fun so that's it guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comments below what books you got over kind of the holiday season or in the month of december um but yeah thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and i will see you guys next time bye guys